this is behind the counter at Hidden Japanese Soba Izakaya Restaurant. Okay, so I'm back here in Shinbashi, Tokyo, one of the most favorite places for salad men to drink at night. This one is going to be a little bit different from this series because we're going behind an izakaya that focuses on soba. But like always, before we start, if you want to see what I'm doing on the daily, check out my Instagram account. If you guys want to help support the channel, then definitely check out my Tokyo and Japan merch. If you have any questions about Japan and Japan travels, then check out my Discord community. Alright, let's do this! Here we go! Just a one minute walk from Shinbashi Station's Hibiya exit. You'll find a local Japanese soba noodle shop, Skehei. Opened in 1975, it's become a salaryman's favorite for its large serving sizes and quality. Oh, that's the store manager, Fujimori-san. Good morning! I guess he's the first one to arrive today. So where are the other workers? So how long have you been working here? What did you do before this? The first thing he does is to carry all the deliveries in, all delivered at the door just as the day starts. Quite a workout going back and forth first thing in the morning. この新橋という道はやっぱカラスがちょっと多いので、業者にはこういった籠で持ってきてもらって搬入してもらわないと全部カラスにやられちゃいます。I guess those Japanese city crows don't mess around. Oh, one of the workers is here. So the shop buys their fish directly from the Toyosu fish market. He still has about two hours before opening, but he already prepares the store signs. The shop itself is tucked away in one of the area's back alley streets, so the signs help attract passerbys and notify them that the store is open. Oh, he's using different oils. Hey, what's the difference? Huh, interesting. Oh snap, that's a soba gama. It can cook up the 10 noodle servings all at once. Now the workers ready the soba dipping sauce that they started the night before. Apparently serving speed is extremely important in busy soba shops so storing it in smaller bottles makes serving faster and more efficient. And before using the bottles, the shop washes it with the actual sauce that goes inside. This is a traditional Japanese cooking technique called ji arai, which helps prevent other ingredients, tastes, and aromas from contaminating the sauce it's being used for. Hi, how old are you? I decided. Cool, how long have you been working here? Uh, oh really? Dope! Now he cooks the rice. Oh, hello! Oh, cool! It's gonna be a little more international than other videos! Now, the workers prepare various sauces served in the shop, like the tempura sauce, katsudon sauce, and so on. Okay, so while the workers are busy on the sauces and other prep, Fujimori-san starts cleaning the fresh fish. He says that since he was originally a Chinese food chef, he didn't know how to prepare and cut fish. But from the looks of it now, it seems like he's mastered the technique. So how did you learn? Uh, what's the hardest thing when preparing and cutting fish? For example, seabrim with a chewy texture tastes better cut thin, while a soft fatty tuna tastes better cut thick. Understanding the characteristics and textures of each fish is a critical skill required to prepare it in Japan. So do you get days off? Wow, congrats! How old is your baby? <laughs> What's his name? I see, how long did you go out before marrying? Wait, how old are you? Oh really? 
18歳と16歳です。この間の日曜日会いました。<laughs> nice! And while Skehe is a go to soba noodle lunch spot for locals, at night it becomes more of a traditional Japanese izakaya drinking restaurant, offering a variety of menu items, and this fresh fish is used for their sashimi and shime saba. How long have you been in Japan? No, I don't Got it. How do you like it? It's a little bit, but it's fun. Oh, another worker came in. Hot diggity! He's preparing the pork katsu hitters, one of my favorites. So, because the shop gets so busy during lunchtime, the workers must get each item on the menu as ready as possible so it can be quickly cooked or fried at the time it's ordered. Now he's gonna prepare the soba yu, which is served after finishing the soba noodles. Soba yu is known to be the actual water used to cook soba noodles, but many Japanese restaurants today simply mix a soba flour with the hot water to create the nutritious soup. You have a hobby? I play tennis in high school. Were you really good? That's amazing! How fast can you serve? Damn, do you play with your wife at all? What does she do? Oh, pots and pans, that kitchen love, huh? Now he prepares the agedama, which are like tempura scraps used as a topping for their tanuki soba, which oddly directly translated means raccoon soba. So what do you do on your free time? I see, what's your hobby? Guitar? You can play? Cool, what genre? Like pop? Interesting. Before we continue on, I want to tell you guys about the awesome people at Boksu who also sponsor this video. I know that many of you have already signed up, which is awesome, but for those of you that don't know, they provide a gourmet experience of Japanese snacks and tea pairings delivered to your front door. They also work with traditional Japanese factories, some over a hundred years old, to provide you with authentic Japanese flavors. First time users will get a Seasons of Japan box, and after that you'll get a theme box like this one. This month's theme is Hokkaido Wonderland, celebrating the northmost Japanese prefecture. Known for its delicious dairy and produce and beautiful wintertime activities. My favorite this month is the white milk boucher made with real deal Hokkaido milk which you can try for yourself or even send the box to a loved one as a special gift this season. So get $15 off your own authentic Japanese subscription snack box from Boksu by using my code PALO15 and link in the description. Alright, here are the noodles! They're freshly made in their central kitchen since they have a few different soba shops in the area. So what's the ratio of your soba? Soba koto, komugi ko, gotai go. Sancha, eh, to, son toki ni yorun desu kero, konkai Hokkaido san. And another worker has arrived. Good morning. Oh, the shop delivers as well. How many do you sell a day? You must be super busy on rainy days. Really? I see. Before the store opens, the shop prepares samples for today's specials to set out in front. And it seems like the shop is making tempura today with dried green seaweed called aonori. Oh, he's finally cooking the soba! I guess this will also be used in the food sample. Dang, look at him go! Unlike pasta, soba noodles don't have the same elasticity and it quickly becomes sticky in hot water. So washing and cooling them down is an important process to create the perfect firmness. Perfect! Soba noodles fresh on the boat! All plated and ready to be set out in front for the customers to view when they come in. Yay! 
Yay, 11.30, the shop is finally open. The first customer is here. I guess he ordered the seaweed soba. Since the workers completed a lot of the prep in the morning, they can quickly make the orders. Apparently, they usually get about 150 customers during lunch on a sunny day, and on rainy days, it can go down to about 50. So we'll see how the day goes. The restaurant is starting to fill up, so the workers must follow suit and keep pace. One cooks the soba and tempura, while another finishes the plating, which then gets brought out to the customers by the servers. They all must work together as a team in order to meet the hungry lunchtime crowds. That katsudon rice bowl looks phenomenal! It's rather quite common for soba noodle shops in Japan to also offer donburi rice bowls, like katsudon and tempuradon on their menu. I usually order it when Maiko's ordering the soba noodles. They seem busy, so let's go talk to the customers. Excuse me, do you come here often? Oh, how often? Do you have any recommendations? Why is that? So what's special about this place? Thanks. Hi, can I talk to you? Are you a regular customer? What did you order today? Oh, what do you like about the shop? Thank you! It looks like the lunchtime rush is hitting its peak, so the workers must work seamlessly as they not only have to prepare orders now, but they also need to wash the used dishes to cycle back through. So, interestingly, most of the workers have the weekends off, which is unlike most restaurants in Japan. But the Shimbashi area itself is unique in that it's a heavy business district, so most regular customers are from local businesses who are also off during the weekends. Since it's slowing down a bit, let's talk to one of the servers. How long have you been working here? Wow, so long! You're Japanese, right? <laughs> How's it working in a more international shop? Awesome! Hi, how long have you been working here? Cool, what did you do before this? So how'd you get this job? Nice, how old are you? And what do you like about this job? What are you doing? Oh damn! Since it's slowing down now, one of the workers is able to take their break early, so Fujimori-san is preparing the makanai early, lunch provided by the shop. And today, he's making fried chicken in a chili sauce, which is a Chinese-inspired dish. Hey, so growing up, did you think you were going to be a chef? How did you learn to cook? And what's your favorite food? Really? Oh, I ate gyoza last night. It's amazing though how much time and effort he puts into making the makanai for his workers. I guess it's his own way of saying thank you. Oh, he's got his food. To what now? Seems that the soba noodles are cooked after the delivery guy arrives to ensure that their customers receive the freshest noodles possible. <laughs> and that's another one in the books. If you want to check out this izakaya soba shop yourself, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. Okay, so that's behind the counter at a soba izakaya. I hope you guys like this video. If you want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.